This is the Uptick Network Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Penny stock news and interviews from the microcap world. Public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world. With your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I know I've said this many a times, but this, this man that's coming on our show is truly uh, a legend. Uh, he's done everything there is in the, in the, in the business of, of movies. Jeremy uh, Fromer yeah, with Jerick Media Holdings. They trade on the OTCQB, uh, JMDA. Why he's coming on my show, I have no, uh, I don't know. I mean, this, I, for this guy to have time for me, it's, it's amazing. Jeremy, thank you very much for coming on the show. No problem. I'm on your show because I'm very impressed with uh, what you've built, Everett. Well, thank. Well, thank you very much. Tell my listeners a little bit about statement, you know, uh, of yourself and your company and where you guys are headed. Um, well, what what my partner Rick Schwartz, who uh, who is in the uh, entertainment industry uh, since the beginning of his career, and myself, as you know, where uh, I was on the Wall Street side. That's uh, right. We we got. To- we got together when, when we sort of had, uh, had found that moment of opportunity for us to collaborate on something, uh, though we had collaborated on, on many films and, and other uh, entertainment industry opportunities over the years. In this case, uh, when he and I saw an opportunity in the digital space to build a real, uh, a real company that made a difference, uh, we decided that it was time for us to, to sort of take off from the institutional world and enter the entrepreneurial world full time. So we created a, uh, what we look at as a, uh, we call it a long form social media platform, long form content. You know, most social media platforms that exist out there, uh, not most, almost all, are, are, are uh, relegated to short form content. Uh, short form content doesn't get SEO'd and search has become such an important aspect of, of everybody's success on the digital, in the digital ethos. Uh, so we wanted to build something that we could uh, create from scratch uh, that would uh, both be a social media platform but also give the opportunity for people to create content that's long form. And what we did was we took many of the brands that he and I had owned uh, for many years, some of them very old brands like Omni's, uh, Omni Magazine, a uh, big sci-fi magazine from, from uh, the 80s and the 90s, and we resuscitated those brands and put them on our vocal platform. And vocal.media is the publishing hub for now eight uh, different verticals that range from interests in uh, music uh, all the way to sci-fi. And in a sense, the way that you should think of it, I don't know if you're familiar with a company called Medium. Uh, Medium is the first real user-generated long-form platform. And what we did was we put a little twist on it. We, we took the idea of, of, of Medium's sort of user-generated content theory and matched it with having uh, concepts like subreddits, uh, and in this case, we refer to them as verticals, and uh, give people an opportunity to target direct communities as opposed to what a lot of sites have become today is basically content, uh, content congested. You know, let me ask you this. What is the most important change in the di- digital space you think that has happened in the last five years? Well, I think it can be traced back to companies like Vice Media and Vox Media and what distinguished those two companies from uh, the 20 years of media uh, brands, mostly old school media brands being on the internet, uh, was the advent of user-generated content. And I really think that is the biggest and most important fundamental shift. I mean, the two biggest problems on the internet today for people are how do I get my voice heard and how do I monetize my voice? Absolutely. And, 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 and the first one was answered by Medium. Uh, Medium, again, uh, I believe Medium is a, a nearly a billion dollar valuation in the private markets these days. I think I'm correct on that. Um, Medium uh, opened up the notion of user-generated content. Uh, this was all possible because there were a lot of breakthroughs in content management platforms that companies like Vice Media uh, and Vox Media were able to capitalize on and allow um, a much broader base of content creators internally, though, for those companies, as opposed to a Medium or a Jarek, uh, Jarek's vocal.media site, where it's open to the general public. What we did was we took it a step further, I guess my 
Wall Street background um, uh, was part of this process, and we created a real dashboard so that users get paid on our site based on performance. And when a, when a, when a person signs up to Vocal.media, they, they get a dashboard that tracks the performance of their articles and pays them, similar to the way YouTube or Spotify pays content creators. We have a similar algo, and we pay people also based on performance. So I think that the biggest, if you ask me what the single biggest change was, it was the evolution in, in content management platforms that has really culminated with us being able to uh, have a create, create a fully scalable environment uh, where anybody can publish to the site, basically. And, and that's, you know, you see it now happening on LinkedIn and on HuffPost, um, but it's hard for those giant infrastructures to really pivot. And then, you know, again, there's, there's, there's a lot of, uh, of bureaucracy still in those infrastructures. Uh, you know, you don't get your voice heard uh, as well there. My guest today is Jeremy Fromer. He is the uh, CEO, CFO, and Executive Director of uh, Jarek Media Holdings. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol JMDA. You know, why didn't you and, and Rick Schwartz just go and make movies after you left Wall Street? Um, you know, Rick and I had made a number of movies. Uh, Rick, Rick himself had, had had done movies like uh, The Departed, Gangs of New York, Black Swan. Um, the one movie that I uh, participated with uh, in Rick's world was a, a, a movie called Machete, uh, starring Danny Trejo, and uh, um, that was one of the few really profitable films we ever did. But for the, for the most part, the movie industry is not a particularly profitable industry. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to make money. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old school model. Um, I might say the same thing about TV as well, but I know that for Rick, uh, Rick is a, a passionate, creative individual, and he wanted to do something that had tremendous scale. And he also wanted to do something that would allow uh, a lot of the people that reach out to Rick throughout his years in the entertainment industry have great ideas, uh, but it's been very, very difficult to execute those ideas. Uh, in, in what was, again, an old-school environment. So Rick wanted to create a platform that really allowed content uh, creators uh, to find themselves and to reach their, their audience. Uh, so it was kind of, for us, we weren't going to go into movies. We had been there, done that. We weren't going to do TV. And, and quite frankly, uh, everything's moving from the big screen to the small screen in your pocket. Absolutely. You know, I want to switch gears here just for a second. I was going over some of your 10 Qs. And, and correct me if my number if my numbers are wrong. Two, 2014, you guys did about eleven thousand in revenue. 2015, you guys you guys did about fifty eight thousand in revenue. But in 2016, you guys are going to do over two hundred thousand. What can we look for 2017? Because that's almost a four hundred percent jump there. I would expect that number to be uh, probably much higher than that. Um, look, we've spent two years developing technology, two and a half years. Uh, and a considerable amount of, of both our private and publicly raised uh, money. So we only really have turned on our system uh, about uh, three weeks ago, uh, turned on our technology. Uh, so vocal, vocal.media only exists for the last three weeks. Much of the revenues that we generated in the past were really just proof of concept revenues for models exactly. uh, that we were running. So um, now that we're fully uh, engaged and uh, recently uh, have, have brought on um, some very well-known brands uh, um, as, part of our, as part of our branding outreach and have also uh, brought on a number of significant influences, uh, influencers as far as our content creation, uh, I think that we're poised for the first year of, of out of beta. I mean, we've really been a company in beta for literally two and a half years. In fact, uh, we had originally decided to do our, uh, our media platform on uh, outsourced technology like WordPress or Squarespace. Uh, and, and truthfully, uh, it, it was about two months into it that I realized the only way this was going to work was if we built our own technology from scratch, which is really what our platform is, what our site explains. And, uh, and that's what we did. And, and, and to build something at the level that we did 
uh, really. It takes a couple of years, a couple of years in development. Uh, so we're very excited that we're out there now uh, functioning uh, on a fully uh, on, a, on a fully realized basis, and, and yeah, the sky's the limit for what we can accomplish now, given the, given the strength of the platform. This new community uh, publishing platform that you guys have, why did you decide to, to do this as a publicly traded company? Oh, that, that, that has really two answers to it. Um, the first one is that, uh, you know, we're a firm filled with millennials. And, Absolutely. Um, and many of those millennials stood, you know, idly by as they worked for all sorts of private companies during tech bubbles, the tech bubbles, and were promised all sorts of stock uh, that never really materialized and never had a value. Uh, when we decided to do this, it was very clear to me that I wanted from scratch, even as a startup, I wanted to be able to have my people uh, and, and, and what is really an, uh, an incredible uh, uh, group of executives and managers, I wanted them to be able to participate directly in the upside. Everybody in my firm is a partner in our firm. Everybody has equity, everybody has options. And, uh, and, and having a publicly traded vehicle, it unites us culturally. Um, and then from, from another standpoint, I think that, look, this will sound a little Armageddon-ish, but I think that there is going to be a distressed level in, the, uh, in sort of the content sites out there uh, that we've never experienced since the beginning of the Internet. And most of that is because uh, most of the internet exists on archaic technology. Like there, the, you know, the financial crisis ever created a, a, a blip in the development cycle of technology. As such, a lot of the websites that are out there just have no shot of turning revenues anymore because they're not their fundamental structure that the architecture that they rest on doesn't really lend itself to the opportunities that exist out there. So either those websites need to completely redesign or build their own proprietary infrastructures like we did and file patents for them like we did, but uh, that takes a lot of money and like I just told you, a lot of time. So because I believe that there are tremendous amounts of those kind of companies out there, I wanted to have a publicly traded currency so that I could do accretive deals off of their revenues in the future. Remember, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm born and bred Wall Street. I'm in the technology <laughs> world, but, but I, look, I look at our company from the standpoint of a Wall Street executive, not the standpoint of a technology executive, which makes all the difference in why we're a publicly traded company. Very well said. My guest today is Jeremy Fromer. He is the CFO, CEO, and Executive Director of uh, Jerick Media Holdings. They trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol JMDA. In closing here, uh, Jeremy, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to talk about that you would like to get out there to the listeners? Um, no, I, we, we just put out a press release recently about the launch of our two new verticals. One is a music vertical, which I would say is really cool. Check it out. It's called Beat, B -E -A -T, dot Media, And the other one is a, a food vertical for foodies out there. And that would be Feast, F-E-A-S-T, Feast, dot Media. And we don't use the dot coms. We use the, the top level domain dot media for all, of our, uh, for all of our websites. And I think those are two perfect examples of the kind of stuff that you're going to see coming out in the future. Very good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. I wish you guys nothing but success, and we're going to check back with you in a couple of months. Thank you so much for having me, Everett. The following program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire LLC, which is responsible for the following content. The opinions and information provided on today's show are those of the guests and of those of the respective companies they represent, and does not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of this station. Uptick Network encourages all listeners of the show to do their own due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that'll work for them, or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of today's show may have paid to appear on the show and are not directly affiliated with Uptick 